Good morning, everyone. Hope everybody's here, ready to enjoy yourself for a beautiful day and a contest here in the Area 1 Northwest Division. Now, I'll keep it short. Phones, turn them off. If you brought a guest, let them know if they speak a different language. Greatly appreciate that. And keeping it short, I'd love to introduce the North West Division Director, Miss Rose Schultz. Division Director. Welcome, fellow Toastmasters, dignitaries, honored guests, to the Northwest Division, where you're going to hear the best of the best today at Harper College. Because you have to ask yourself, where else would you rather be <coughs> excuse me, on a Saturday morning than at Harper College to hear the best of the best that the Northwest Division has to offer? Correct? Right. Yes. 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 Our illustrious Sergeant of Arms has already indicated to you to silence those devices, but just to remind you, Paul, if you we hear any of these noises, now Ivory and Iqbal and Bill and Tiffany, they've all told me that if you hear, we hear any of these noises, they are going to confiscate those devices and we're going to auction them off at the spring conference. <laughs> so please just keep that top of mind. Okay, thanks, Paul. <laughs> So any of those noises, you know what it means. Before we begin our contest today, it's my privilege and pleasure to introduce some of the VIDs and VIPs in the house today. And you're probably asking, Jerry, what are VIDs and what are VIPs? Very important dignitaries and very, very important people, and that's the leadership of our district. So first of all, let me recognize our district director, Mr. Ivory Gwynn. Our program quality director, Mr. Iqbal Acha. Our program director, Tiffany Howard Stelenko. Director, my brother, Mr. Bill Morrell. Yeah. Our, event, our esteemed Northwest Division Director, Rose Schultz. Yeah. Our Division Director, Mr. Jerome Rowley. Yeah. Now we have a whole plethora of area directors. So first, area director number one, Northwest Division, Joan Walton. Yay! A3, area director, Mr. Sean Siegel. Sean. Area four, area director, Mr. Rick Westcott. Area 5 Area Director, Kirsten Jensen. Area 6 Area Director, Mary Matron. D31 Area Director, Stella Lawrence. North Division, North 42 Area Director, Kathleen Donahue. And 
North Division, North 44 Area Director, Mr. Scott Fitzer. F83 Area Director, Mr. Steve Mustaine. Let me just double check quickly. Okay. And the 1987-1988 past district governor, Mr. Bob Roman. <laughs> and the dignitaries that I have missed. Excellent. Okay. We will have two contests today the International Speech Contest, and the Table Topics Contest. The first contest, of course, as we most of us know, will be the Table Topics Contest. And then after that contest is concluded, we will have a brief 15-minute intermission. So you'll be able to socialize and network with your fellow Toastmasters. Then after the break, we will conduct the International Speech Contest. Contestants, timers, ballot counters, and sergeant arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Every one of us, and I do mean every one of us, is aware of the Toastmaster International rules that govern this contest. You will not be allowed to either enter or leave the room, ladies and gentlemen, during the contestants' presentations. Please be respectful of that. However, you may do so during that one minute of silence between presentations. Thank you, and are you ready for a contest? <laughs> One thing before we dive into this, because the contestants have all worked so very, very hard to deliver their speeches today. Please, use all of your energy you can muster to enthusiastically and energetically Acknowledge them when they come up here and take the speaking area. Fair enough? Yeah. Then with that said, let the contest begin. <laughs> and now, Mr. Media Director. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> and now, the starting lineup. Let me give you the speaking order. Table topics contestant number one, Sue Haswalter. Sue Haswalter. Table topics contestant number two, Bijal Joshi. Bijal Joshi. Table topics contestant number three, Lindsay Gora. Table topic contestant number four, Stephen Will. Stephen Will. Table topic contestant number five, Hong Ming Lu. Hong Ming Lu. And table topic contestant number six, Dennis Temko. Dennis Temko. Does everyone have that? Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Sergeant Arms, would you please escort all the contestants out of the room except for our first contestant? silence between each contestant's presentation. Timekeepers, when I advise you to do so, please signal me when the green light is up. Then after all the contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their ballots. 
Now, in order to have a table topics contest, we need to have a table topics question. So Price Waterhouse is going to deliver the table topics question. So uh. Price Waterhouse, would you come up? And Begin the table topics contest. Table topics contestant number one, Sue Haswalter. What three questions do you wish you knew the answers to? What three questions do you wish you knew the answer to, Sue Haswalter? job we wanted or not. But the answer to the question, number three, is none of us know our future. We can only do the best we can to make it ours. Mr. Toastmaster. Mark their balance. Thank you. <clears throat> Table topics contestant number two was Ja Joshi. What three questions do you what three questions do you wish you knew the answer to? What three questions do you wish you knew the answer to? Vija Joshi.
definitely more than three. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster, dignitaries, fellow Toastmasters, yes. I always wonder how my presentations anywhere would end. Right? Not how it would start. I know already how it was going to start. I prepared for it. How it would end. I always wonder how my day would end. Right? And I always wonder how this presidency is going to end. <laughs> so it's, just, it's not really just, as I said, not just three. Right? I can expand it to any number. Does it really matter how it's going to end? It, it's just another day in life. It's just one more presentation. It's just one more president. Right? It doesn't matter. What matters is how I live through it. What am I going to do? How am I going to prepare for the presentation? What message I'm trying to convey during my that presentation? How I'm going to live my day? How people will remember? How I'll influence them in that day? doesn't matter who the president is, right? What policies he's going to set, I have no control over. I have only control over my own, my own behavior. How I'm going to support, how I'm going to contest, how I'm going to present myself, how I'm going to prepare and live through it. And that's all that matters. This is those Silence while the judges mark their balance. Tabletop is contestant number three, Lindsay Gora. What three questions do you wish you knew the answer to? What three questions do you wish you knew the answer to? Lindsay Gora. would 
probably be Do aliens exist? <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why I think that question is my husband and I argue about this quite a bit. He thinks that space and the universe is so amazing, and I do too. But I think that there's way more important things to spend our money on than trying to get to another Earth when we have a perfect one right here. So those would probably be the questions I would ask to get the answer to. But when I really sit down and think about it, do we really want to know the answer to these questions? Or is life all about a mystery and what we make of it to make sense of the world? Just like that quote, we have to force the world to make sense. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Mr. Tyler. Table topic contestant number four, Stephen Will. What three questions do you wish you knew the answer to? What three questions do you wish you knew the answers to? Stephen Will. Toastmaster Jerry. Difficult questions. Three questions that I wish I knew the answer to. They aren't when I'm going to die. They aren't anything like that. I'll leave that to fate. I think the first question that I would want to know is how can I prevent failing the people that rely on me? And I would use that information to prevent that because one of my inspirations is to live up to and come through for people that depend on me, that love me, and that I love. Number two, I think the, the second question would be, what can I do to make myself happier in life? What would enrich my life? Is it learn a new language? Is it learn an instrument? Is it learn a new skill? And I would also use that to better my life and enrich others in the process. Number three, at the end of my life, what will people think of me? How will I go out in this world? Will they see me as somebody who made their lives better? Will they say, I had a long time with Steve, or I had a short time with Steve, but I'm glad for that time that I had because he touched me in some way. Those what I would, are what I would want to know. Thank you. May we reserve one minute of silence for the judges mark their ballots.
Thank you, Mr. Tyner. Table Tennis contestant number five, Hong Ming Lu. What three questions do you wish you knew the answers to? What three questions do you wish you knew the answers to? Hong Ming Lu.
Mr. Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Another big round of applause for all our tabletop speakers. Gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, our dignitaries, and our honored guests. While we are waiting for Price Waterhouse and the judges to tabulate the votes, we're going to hear from our esteemed district director who's going to share some details with you and have a few other announcements. So, Mr. Media Master, would you please? <coughs> Come on, jack it up. <laughs> Let's have a look at our district director, Mr. Ivy Quinn. Keep it going. Okay. You want to keep it going? I'll keep it going. How many of you guys have a great time? That's what it's about. How many of you guys are on track for a CC? Okay. Okay, great. That's a great thing. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. But first of all, I want Bill and Tiffany to come up and give you a little information about what we need from you in the next few days. talking and a week from tomorrow on Sunday, April 2nd. Do you know what starts? Uh, Tiffany, go ahead and tell them. Baseball season. <laughs> <laughs> Who's a Cubs fan in this room? Woo! April 2nd, Bush Stadium. Yes. The men in blue against the men in the red. And imagine if that start of the season had nobody in the stands. Imagine this contest had nobody in the seats. It doesn't work really well. So we want you to help fill your clubs. We want you to help fill the people around you with the good that comes out of Toastmasters. There's one way to do that. Tiffany? How many of you like, I'm going to ask you first, how many of you like your Toastmasters membership? Yes. Right? Is that why we're here on a Saturday rainy morning, right? Love. Yeah. Love. Love. Love it. So if you love your Toastmasters membership, you have to continue your Toastmasters membership, right? Yes. That is what's upon us right now is dues renewal. So dues are due April 1st. As of April 1st, if you don't pay your dues of your club, your membership lapses, and then we don't get to see you anymore. We want to see you, so we want you to come back. So Bill, how do they do that? One of the ways to do that is to use your credit card. Another way is your debit card. Another way is cash. Another way is check. So see your treasurer. See your fellow Toastmasters in your club. See who has paid and who has not paid. And just remember that we don't have that grace period like we used to. If you're not paid from the start of baseball season next Sunday, you'll be off the roster. If your roster doesn't have at least eight member members, one more time. If your roster doesn't have eight members, then your club doesn't show up anymore on our reports. And we want to see you on our reports, but more important, we want to see you in the seats. So go and enjoy the Major League Baseball season. Enjoy the Cubs or the Sox, that other team, if you want to. But before you do that, before the baseball season starts, please go ahead and renew your membership. Encourage your fellow club members are new year memberships, and stay strong with Toastmasters. So a little, a little side note just for the competitors today. Make sure that your club and yourself is paid if you're going on to the next level. Because if not, then you are not considered a valid member and you will be disqualified. And we don't want you to get disqualified after all the hard work of the Northwest contest today, right? Right. All right, so help your fellow Toastmasters out, pay your dues, and also pay your own. Okay? And go Cubs! <laughs> March the 31st, you will be automatic, you will automatically receive a complimentary dinner on Friday night. We're going to celebrate that achievement together on Friday night. So, how many of you guys was at the ball uh, reception day? Wasn't it fun? It was nice to get up, to get dressed and go out on a night and celebrate with your Toastmasters friend. Instead of getting up in the morning at 4 a.m. to get to the conference for a 
7 o'clock breakfast. That's hard. I don't even, I don't even eat at 7 a.m. <laughs> so achieve your award, and we'll give you a free dinner on Friday night. Also, we're going to have a business briefing, let you know how well the district is doing. Any questions? You can answer it there. We're going to also have, what are we doing here t right now? Tabletop. Table topics. That's right. The best of this district is going to be tried tonight. And then we're going to get up Saturday morning and be going to elect the next leaders for the new forming district 103 and District 30. So you need to have your, if, you're not, if the club president is not going to come, please give it to somebody in your club so they can vote for your club. We need the votes. So we're going to elect the officers. We're going to talk, we're going to have Magnus come and share some information from Toastmaster International. <coughs> and then we're going to have another thing. We're going to have, what is we going to have, what's that one thing we're going to do? The International <laughs> Speech Contest. And where are we going to go if you win? Vancouver. 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 I heard it is beautiful in the summer. I would like to be there as a winner. But I don't want to be but I want to see it. So come out and enjoy. On Saturday night, the final District 30 Chicago Land Conference. And you will receive only at dinner a commemorative plate with this symbol on it. You'll be able to keep it and remember District 30, Chicago land. Thank you. One thing that our district director, just to make you mindful of, is that there are those things called educational sessions. There will be a great big offering of different educational sessions. The schedule, I believe, Mr. District Director, will come out this week. The final schedule. Yes. Right. So you'll be able you, you will be able to go online and register for the individual sessions. And the reason for that, we want to make sure that those of you who sign up ahead of time pre-register that we can allocate room space so we don't try to fit 100 people into a room that only holds 40 people. So we're going to ask you to register, to register, register. Those of you, your clubs have already registered, but now go back <coughs> and make sure that the individuals register for those sessions. Are we going to do this now? Okay, so I'm going to call up our club growth director, Tiffany, and she's going to have some surprises for us. <laughs> Rose has some things and I do, so there's at least ten. At least. Ten. 
last time. Oh. I've got more than five, so maybe 15. Oh, great. Ben, maybe the clerk can get the first one.
No five nine four ones. All right, you've been number. All right, bring these quick. Six zero zero five. Six zero zero five. Where is everybody at? They can't believe you. Up. Come on down, 5966. 5966. 5966. All right, come on down. 1110 so we can start the international speech contest please take advantage of the restrooms outside all the food refreshments enjoy yourself we'll be back in here in 10 minutes before we begin a couple things i just want to remind you of you know speech contests are an important part of the toastmasters educational program because they provide an opportunity for toastmasters to gain speaking experience as well as an opportunity for other toastmasters to learn by observing proficient speakers. Because those of us, or all of you who have competed in speech contests, speech contests will A, they will test you, they will challenge you, they will change you. If you learn the lesson and grow from the experience, you can keep the change. <laughs> Fair enough? Okay. So now, once the contest has begun, the Sergeant Arms will secure the doors. You're asked not to either come in or go out during the contestants' presentations. And after the contest, please do not leave the room until the ballot counters have collected all the ballots, the judges have completed them, and then they'll go outside the room to tabulate the results. So now, let me give you the speaking order for the International Speech Contest. International Speech Contestant number one, Roger. Matthews. Roger Matthews. International speech contestant number two, Neil Foodle. Neil Foodle. International speech contestant number three, Sandra Cheerhart. Sandra Cheerhart. International speech contestant number four, Stacia Hobson. Stacia Hobson. And international speech contestant number five, Dennis Tempko. Dennis Tempko. Does everyone have those? Yes. yes. Thank you. So now we'll proceed with the International Speech Contest. There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timekeepers want to advise them to do so. They'll signal you with the green light when the one minute is up. And then, of course, after the ballot, after the contest is concluded and they've collected the ballots, they'll have all the time that they need. We will now begin the International Speech Contest. <laughs> Now 
again, the International Speech Contest. Thank you, Mr. Media Master. <laughs> Roger Matthews, the power of forgiveness, the power of forgiveness, Roger Matthews. Why is it that relationships have to be so painful? especially within your own family. What's going on here? I couldn't believe what happened in our house at Thanksgiving. It was the unthinkable. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and distinguished guests. Do you have a problem relative in your family? I've got a real doozy. I have an aunt by the name of Judy. She's in her 80s and stands about five foot two and wears this old-fashioned bun-style hairdo. She works at the local library, and I know she gets a kick out of collecting those fines for <laughs> <laughs> She's the kind of person that believes in being brutally honest. A tell it like it is kind of gal. I know she offends people wherever she goes. <laughs> My wife, Lori, had worked for days in preparing our Thanksgiving feast to make sure everything was just right. Our family and relatives said the dining room table looked so beautiful, like a Norman Rockwell painting. Turkey was steaming. The mashed potatoes and gravy. Oh, they smelled so fantastic. We could all hardly wait to dig in. We had just taken our first bite, and then it happened. Aunt Judy opened her big mouth. <laughs> she said, Oh, the turkey is dry. <laughs> <coughs> then she said, I should have been here to help you so that it could have been done right. <laughs> I looked over at Lori. She had a tear in her eye and went into the kitchen. I quickly followed like a good husband. <sighs> Who does that? How could she be so rude? Raj, I can't believe what she did. It destroyed my whole Thanksgiving holiday. We had to recompose ourselves to go back out and sit at the table. We sat down. There was a dark cloud over the table. None of our family and guests were speaking. They were all totally silent. I couldn't believe this happened. Lori and I were so angry at Aunt Judy. It was an anger that would not go away. Do you have an Aunt Judy in your family? <laughs> or someone that just hurt your feelings time and time again? My father was a Methodist minister for over 50 years. He had so much wisdom when it came to personal relationships. I told him what went on at Thanksgiving. He said, Raj, it sounds like you and Lori have been in a lot of pain about this. How many days or weeks have you been thinking about it? I said, well, it's been at least a couple weeks. He said, there's one thing that I want you to remember. The anger you have inside only imprisons you. Forgiveness is the key to inner peace. Dad, does that mean that 
Forgiveness is for me and for not, not for them. He said that is right because they will often have no remorse. Forgiveness is something we must do for ourselves. When I got home that day, I was waiting for Lori because I wanted to share with her what I learned from my dad. We decided to forgive Aunt Judy. As time went on, we looked for the good things about her and tried to ignore the bad. I called up Aunt Judy and asked her to come for the next holiday, and this time she could help prepare the meal with Lori. She said she would be happy to. And this time, she would make sure that it's done right. <laughs> you can't change people. <laughs> Do you have someone you're angry about in your life? Someone you're angry with? Someone who you're holding in resentment about? Why is forgiveness so important in our lives? When we forgive those who mistreat us, even though they don't deserve it, we set ourselves free. <clears throat> Let forgiveness liberate you from your past and take away the resentment you've held in your heart. The process is so simple. If you feel confined, the bars of the cell are around you. Look down at the door and find the keyhole. You hold in your hand the key, the key of forgiveness. Just stick it in the lock, turn it, and you can walk free. The next time you feel anger, Feel resentment in your heart. Try to let go. The key is in forgiveness. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Madam Time. International speech contestant number two, Neil Foote. Lessons we can learn from the forest. Lessons we can learn from the forest, Neil Foote. When my boys were little, we would go for hikes and walks out and the woods down on Roselle Road in Bloomingdale. There's a bridge going over connecting the two sides now. One's married, the other one's engaged. I get to go on my own. In October, I decided to go for a walk over the bridge, and it was when I just decided I'm going to listen to the forest, just learn some lessons. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and I'm a guest. There's a beautifully paved I decided to kind of walk down it. Just as in life, you pick your path. 
And as I was drawing, I could see up in the distance golden leaves blowing in the wind as the sun was rising and hitting it. And I could hear the geese off in the distance practicing, forming their formation to get ready to go on their long journey down south. As I was walking, I heard the runners. Somebody flew by. And then the biker is going with the earbuds in and just flying by, which is fine. It's their exercise. But they didn't notice the little hummingbird with its long beak just sucking the nectar from the plants, getting ready for its journey south. Or the other little butterflies and bees collecting the last of the nectar. They didn't stop to smell the roses. They were just too busy living life and going by and didn't notice. As in life, when you walk, I came to a fork in the road, a fork in the path. Which way to go? I look to the right. Yeah, it's a long uphill walk. You know, that knee replacement just wasn't ready for it. <laughs> then I look to the left. It's a long walk around the lake. So I decided to go on the third path of the fork. Most people just know there's a fork in the road, there's two. But there's a third one, the one I just came from. It's a nice, safe path. I know what's there. Maybe the bird will still be there. I decided I'm going back that way. It's safe. It takes me back to my car. It takes me back home where I can sit, relax, and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. And as I was going, I noticed a little break in some of the trees. It was the path less taken. So being the adventurer I was, I kind of crawled in and decided to take that path less taken. It led me to a wonderful little creek filled with all these little water striders dancing around on top, catching their microscopic food. They were hungry. Some of them fought the stream, went upstream. In life, we have hardships, and they decided to swim one of those up. The others just floated, and they came to a little rock. Some would just float and decide which way it was going. The water took them wherever they were going. Others wanted to go a different direction. As in our lives, we have choices. Which path do we take? Sometimes in our lives, we have a big bump in the road. And when we come to it, we're tossed a different direction that we didn't know we were going to go down. And we stuck in it, and we're going that direction. <coughs> it could be a loss of a job, a divorce papers that were just given you. Or in my case, it happened about four years ago. I had a bad stomach ache, hurt a lot. Sunday morning, eh, another Sunday morning back at the ER. Took some tests, they knocked me out, did a biopsy, did some scans, came back and the radiologist looked and said, I've got a diagnosis for you. I was like, all right, what? You got little floaty things in your kidney and bladder. Well, just some little floaty things like fingers. Follow up with your doctor in a few days. A few days later, went to the doctor. And he told my wife and I, you've got kidney cancer and bladder cancer. We're going to have to take out a kidney. We'll take out some other organs while we're in there, too, if we have to. About three weeks later, I was on the table. When these things come in, what support group do you have? I had a wonderful family. The two kids that I was talking about, they were already investigating to see how do we become, how do we become kidney donors. I didn't find that out until two months after the operation. They were there for me. They got there 5.30 in the morning, ready for the operation. And then when I woke up in the recovery room. They were there again. We didn't decide to go down this path. Life and the current of life just took me down that path. We became a stronger family. A lot of support now from them. My support for them. The kids don't know that I know they tried to see how to donate a kidney. I didn't have to go through any 
radiation, chemo, they just wrecked it all up, took out the cancer, and it was gone. So we never even looked into anything else. We've become a stronger family from this. We still do a lot of fun things and have our arguments. Other little bumps in the road <coughs> come up. How are you going to react to your bumps in the road? They're going to be there. It's up to us to choose how we handle them. When you do hit one of those bumps in the road, I wish there'll be a small bump for you. And if it's a bigger bump and the path you didn't decide, I hope you have a support team, whether it comes from the family or it comes from support groups from the hospital or wherever they are. There's people there that have had the same experience. We're all Toastmasters. We all have Toastmasters experiences. How many of us have other experiences, the ones we don't want to talk about until yeah, I'm one of the members of the club, the cancer club, and all of a sudden I found there's many of us out there. One in four, three of you are safe. I volunteered to be that one. So again, I wish you a safe journey. May the bumps be small and your support group be big. Mr. Toastmaster. Madam Simon. International speech contestant number four, Stacia Hobson. Showing up. Showing up, Stacia Hobson. company 
only 26 employees. I was adjusting to the boss or employee going to boss role. I thought I was doing pretty good until the reality of being boss hit. It was leaked from the inner sanctum of the break room that I was known as the BB. <laughs> I am fairly certain that BB does not mean blonde boss. <laughs> Regardless of what they thought, I was genuinely concerned for everyone's welfare. You all know how it feels, how scary it is to have your job security threatened in the time of a recession. The problem before me is how do you save the mothership and all its passengers at the same time? In 2000, I hired business coach Teresa. I didn't think much of Teresa until the recession. One day I showed up complaining about how bad business was due to the economy. Okay, I was actually whining. I was loud. I probably sounded something like this.
we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. Toastmaster, we have all the notes. <laughs> Shall we get to know our contestants? Yes. yes. Shall we get to know our contestants? Yes. Yes. So, we have a couple table topics come up first for a brief interview. <coughs> so, Sue, Bajan, Lindsay. <laughs> Stephen, Colin <laughs> Bean, and Dennis. Right. <laughs> okay, we're all accustomed to the questions we normally ask, so we're going to go through this. And most of you know the questions, but just to refresh us, let us know, Sue, what club you're representing today. Uh, Fox Valley Toastmasters, 6840. Okay, see, she knows the number, too. That's and she knows your number. And how long have you been a Toastmaster, Sue? Since spring of 2009. Spring of 2009. And what is your educational level in Toastmasters? <laughs> is Advanced Communicator Silver, Advanced Leader Bronze. 
Okay. I know just a little bit about the school, but we're not going to touch on that today. Tell us about what inspires, what inspires you the most. People who do, I love this, people do what needs to be done without fanfare. What does that mean to you? What, how can we apply that? There are so many people out there when you, when you uh, listen to how to advance yourself in that, one of the things is make sure that people notice you. Those of us introverts in the world would rather people didn't notice us. <laughs> but that doesn't preclude you from going out and taking care of things. And what I've seen most helpful are the people who just go out and say, what do you need me to do? Clean up, you know, set out the food, clean up afterwards, whatever it takes, just to make everything flow better for everyone else. Well, Sue, you absolutely did that today. Thank you for being a participant in the Tabletops Contest. And on behalf of District 30 and, of course, the Northwest Division, we thank you for being a contestant today. Thank you. Same question, my friend. Let us know what club you're representing today. Uh, Conti Automotive. Okay, Conti Automotive speakers. I know a little bit about Conti since okay. I was involved in the beginning with Conti, uh -huh. so that's awesome. And how long have you been in Toastmaster at this point? About uh, two and a half years. Two and a half years. And what is your current educational level in Toastmaster? Oh, you don't want to ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, actually, I do, because everybody, everybody, everybody needs to hear this. Okay. So I'm halfway through CC and CF. Okay. That is outstanding. Tell me a little bit about, you have three different hobbies. Tell us about your love for music and on any particular day, what type of music kind of encourages you, stimulates you, excites you, inspires you, or you have different genres? Hmm. Okay, so I put only three because space was limited. Okay. So we'll focus on music. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so, so mu music is uh, it, it's part of, of my culture, right? So we 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 grew up listening to singing songs and uh, and I, I I it would be hypocritic of me of saying that I like a specific one. Okay. I like I like the one that has uh, well it depends on the occasion. Sometimes I like the ones with the good lyrics. Sometimes I like just the jazzy music. Sometimes I just listen to classical. Right? It, it, other times I really find them boring. So, <laughs> so it, it varies for the for the mood, for the occasion. But but one thing is for sure, I listen to it. And now I admire it even more because recently I started playing one. Well, Bajal, there was certainly music to our ears today for you being a participant in the Table Topic Contest. On behalf of the Northwest Division and District 30, I'd like to present you with a certificate of participation for being a contestant. <laughs> Lindsay, 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 how old are you? Same questions, let us know what club you're representing today. AT&T Chicagoland Toastmasters, number 1526. You got it right. Exactly. All right. Right down again. Practice. Yes. And what's your current educational level in Toastmasters? I'm an advanced communicator bronze, working on my advanced communicator silver, and I'm my competent leader. But if I probably like took the time to read it, I probably would have like my advanced leader. <laughs> Tell us about spieling. Spieling. Spieling, yeah. Spieling. Right there. Where is that? That's right there. Oh, wow. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I started writing something. That's, that's why I wanted to ask you. Know that, I, I must sure have been feeling that out at work while I was like doing something else, multitasking. I have no idea about indoor climbing. Why do you like indoor climbing? How'd you get involved in it? You know, one of our friends just said, hey, you guys want to do something girls day? So she picked to do indoor climbing. And there's a place in Glendale Heights. It's called Vertical Endeavors. It's actually the biggest indoor climbing facility in the United States. 
So we went there, and I haven't worked out for very long. I know the time. And I tried it, and I actually enjoyed it, and I felt very confident in what I was doing. And what I liked about it is you really have to learn to trust yourself and the moves you're making and things like that. And, and it's kind of a strategy-based thing. You look at all your options, and you have to have the confidence to make the decisions, and I find it very empowering. And I hope that my daughter one day could get involved in it, because I think it would be great for children as well to boost their own confidence. That's, that's outstanding. I remember when Lindsay gave, she was a speech contestant, and she talked about jumping out of an airplane. So she kind of you know, went from jumping at 14,000 feet or whatever down to doing vertical climbing. So, But Lindsay, on behalf of District 30 in Northwest Division, I'd like to present you with civic participation for being a contestant today in Tabletop. Outstanding job. Let us know what club you're representing today. Steve Will, I'm with the, the Cummins Allison Toastmasters out of Mount Prospect. And uh, we just chartered last year, April, so yes. I am just on the cusp of becoming a Toastmaster for a year. And so, not just beginning my CC and CL, so, but I'm enjoying the ride. So, yeah. <laughs> because their president, Rick Westcott, is in the room today as an area director. And the year that they've been a Toast, Toastmasters club, they have really come a long way. They're really an engaged and very involved club, so I'm glad that Steve is here today. So Steve, tell us about playing music. What instruments do you play, Instrument and or instruments, and which one is your favorite? Sure. I uh, actually spent a lot of time grade school, high school, college with actually a concert B-flat clarinet. And I got a minor out of it, so it was actually really good to really, for many years, get some formal training on it along the way. I enjoy the piano and guitar, and I, I like playing them all. And uh, you know, it's it's never enough. I have always enjoyed it. It's, it's I never play enough, but when when I do, it's a good time. I bet I bet it. Well, it was a good time listening to you today, being a participant in the tabletop contest. On some behalf of the district, District 30, and the Northwest Division, I'd like to present you with a certificate of participation for being a contestant. Thank in the you. Tabletop. Thank you. Question, my friend. Let us know what club you're with. Yeah, I'm with XL, uh, Toastmaster from Area File. Okay. And I've been uh, in Toastmaster two and a half years. I'm okay. a CC. You're a CC, all right. <laughs> Thinking a moment, my fellow Toastmasters, when we complete a CC, that puts us in the top. Does anyone know? Nine Top eight to ten percent of Toastmasters around the world. So I encourage all of you to complete a CC because that really begins our journey in Toastmasters. So thank you, I mean That is excellent. I know that you placed um, in the speech humor speech contest. We're not going to talk about the humor today, but let's talk about change. What is change? I know we all go through changes, but what's one of the biggest changes you've gone through? Uh, I have two little kids. They are. Uh, when, when they were about one year old, I changed so many diapers. <laughs> and I was thinking, if you give me a big enough diaper, I can change the world. <laughs> we do talk about humor, right? <laughs> you know, they say that there's two people that love change. You just mentioned one of them, a child with a wet diaper and a cashier. So, what's <laughs> people like change? Your favorite quote, knowing others is intelligence, knowing yourself is true wisdom. Yeah, it's from out. And I, I, I didn't finish my metaphor in the table topic, actually. I will talk about looking insta inside. Whenever I look inside, I see a really vulnerable me. And that's why I use sense of humor kind of as an armor wrapped around me to protect myself. And that makes me a chink in the armor. <laughs> you certainly succeeded in doing that today. I'd like to present you with a participation for me. Where else did you get this kind of entertainment? <laughs> 
last meeting on Saturday morning. It's a tough act to fly. I don't know. I don't know. I have too many kinks. I don't have any iron. So let us know what club you're representing today, Dennis. Um, I'm happy to represent Career Communicators, club number 2207975, and thank my buddies to be able to be here with me. Okay. And I have been a Toastmaster for five years. Past year, I got my DTM. And I'm just finishing paperwork to get my second CC and second CC. All right. Let me put down people who have compassion and are committed to helping others. I think that's about it. Um, that sets it. You know, I, I'm going to maybe say something about this before, but our friend Ethel Gautier, past district director, you know, when, when I got my DTM, and again, this isn't about me, but she shared with me, I thought, what do I do? What's my next step to be able to do when you get to reach that point? And what she said is you, you mentor, you coach, you help. And people that have a passion around Toastmasters, they're in this room today, want to help you. And that's to be the action, the compassion that we have here. here, here. The lead is to serve. Absolutely. Well, Dennis, on behalf of District 30 in the Northwest Division, I'd like to present you with a certificate of participation for being a contestant. Now if I could please call up our international speech contestants for a brief interview. forgiveness today, but I know a little bit about you personally. Let everyone know, Roger is quite the accomplished musician. Let us know your love for not only music, but for guitars in particular. Well, I started playing guitar at 10 years old, and I just couldn't put it down. And uh, when I graduated from college, I went to work for the Gibson Guitar Company, and still to this day, I practice a couple hours every day. So I love it. Well, we love the fact that you participated in the contest today. So on behalf of District 30 and the Northwest Division, I'd like to present you with certificate participation in the International Speech Contest. <laughs> you have any questions, my friend? Let us know what club you're representing. Masters of Opportunity, 3634. I've been in Toastmasters about four and a half years now. And I have the ALB, I got the paperwork, I finished for the communication bronze, and I'm working on the fourth CC. Outstanding. <laughs> so one of our members asked us if we can do another CC, the answer is? Yes. yes. Absolutely, yes. So tell us about, I know that you were really involved in a number of different things, but tell us about the Special Olympic teams that you were involved in. It was about 10, 15 years ago. I helped form a District 20 Special Olympics out in Des Plaines. When I was a junior in high school, I got involved with muscular dystrophy swim. And from there, I just kept moving into the different Special Olympics. <coughs> I've coached diving, swimming. I refed the, uh, for the swimming also. Volleyball, and one other one I can't remember. The Special Olympic Games. Okay. That's outstanding. And I couldn't leave without this. Okay. His favorite quote. <laughs> Hi ho silver. <laughs> <laughs> the Lone Ranger rides again. <laughs> How to help people. I'm in the healthcare, so I just jump in people's houses, fix the equipment, and ride on. That's awesome. Well, hi ho silver so. to you today for doing a great job in this contest. So on behalf of District 30 and Northwest Division, I'd like to present you with civic participation in the let us know what club you're representing today. Crystal Lake 2724. 
rise to a different level in order for you when you took over the company. Other than you being obviously female, and then aside from the, the blonde part of it, which I don't think has anything to do with it, even though that's kind of a stereotype, what was your biggest challenge? What, or what was your biggest, I guess, fear, if you will, just stepping into that role at that point? Failing. <laughs> I mean, at that point, what my speech was about, uh, <coughs> you know, it was so, my employees are so important to me. And I look at it as when you hire somebody, you hire them. And it is an unwritten contract that you need to make sure that you provide work every day and that you keep them employed. Plain and simple. So that's terrifying. <laughs> well, certainly, Stage Chef, you showed up today. And you show what it is to be a new Toastmaster, to get on the stage and be a contestant on the International Speech Contest. So on behalf of District 30 and the Northwest Division, I'd like to present you with a certificate of participation for being a contest in International Speech Contest. Job well done. Thank you. So we're not going to go into the same questions because we, we know what club you're representing. But what I do want to know, tell us about Lindsay. And, you know, she's obviously gone way beyond that label. You as her father. What was the hardest thing for you to do at that point when she started to be labeled like that? You had these different people, you know, slapping labels on her. And how did how did you deal with that as her dad? Well, I, that's a hard question for me to answer because it's so personal. Um, we dealt with this for eighth grade. I was just coaching her in travel softball, so it was really I, we spent during the summertime. If any of you have been in travel, you're seeing your kids six days a week. And all of a sudden now she's not feeling well, and it was really tough. Um, there's more behind this story, obviously, in the speech, but it was really hard, and she was, it, it really messed up her sleep schedule. The hard thing was you go home at night, and she would be awake during the day, and I mean awake at night and sleep during the day. It really mucked up her schedule, and it was her pain that she would feel. As a father, I, I said it, and... One of my fellow Toastmasters said I should share it. It was very painful. As a dad, you just want to fix it. It's gone on for a long time, and it was the pain will, I don't think, ever go away. It, was, it wasn't just somebody gets sick for three months. Um, it was really literally for about seven, eight years. And that, to me, in answer to your question, the challenge is still there. She's not fully there, but she's done very well and her health has improved significantly. So, that is awesome. so thank you. I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you. honored guests and our dignitaries this morning. It's been my privilege and pleasure to be your Toastmaster. My job has concluded as Toastmaster. Now I would like to invite, it, invite up our divine Northwest Area Director, Rose Schultz. First, I would like to thank Jared for doing such an outstanding job of guiding this contest. Didn't you do an awesome job with this? Please. 
Thank you. Thank you. 